Hi, my name is Tiara, and I will be talking about the two reports I chose from the Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report from the CDC. For my two reports, I chose report number one and number five. Since number five is the easiest to talk about and run through, I would go ahead and dive into that. The title of my first report is The Increase in Meningococcal Disease Among Persons with HIV. Meningococcal disease is the disease being reported in the CDC report. Meningococcal disease is a potentially fatal condition that commonly manifests as meningitis or meningococcemia. <laughs> this report states that meningitis' most common signs and symptoms are fever, headache, and stiff neck. Meningococcemia's most common signs and symptoms are fever, chills, vomiting, fatigue, diarrhea, chilly hands and feet, and severe aches or discomfort. The population group stated in this report was people with HIV. Reading through this report, I thought it was interesting that it states that based on preliminary data, 29 meningococcal disease cases have been reported among persons with HIV in 2022, accounting for 9.8% of all cases. Among the 29 meningococcal diseases cases among persons with HIV in 2022, 22 had not received the men ACWI vaccine, 6 had unknown men ACWI vaccination history, and 1 had received the men ACWI vaccine, but the number of doses received was unknown. 15 of the 29 cases were part of a large zero group C outbreak that occurred primarily among men who have sex with men, also known as MSM. However, after excluding MSM outbreak associated cases for all years, a substantial increase in meningococcal diseases cases among persons with HIV in 2022 remain. It is crazy to me that only 7 people out of 29 people had received the meningitis and blood poisoning vaccine. This low number of vaccines probably caused an increase in cases of meningococcal disease, causing the outbreak that occurred among men who were having sex with men. The metrics that were used in this report were prevalence. The report goes on to discuss how among the 14 cases of people with HIV in 2022, eight of those nine cases occurred in African-American people, and seven occurred from men having sex with men. The minor mental influences that I saw that were also discussed were how the nine cases caused by a single strain were reported from three states with no identified connection among the cases. The remaining five cases were not clustered geographically and had no identified epidemiological epidemiologic connections. The report also discusses what medical care steps medical personnel should take to prevent any cases of meningococcal disease. In addition, healthcare professionals ought to maintain a high index of concern for meningococcal disease in HIV patients who exhibit signs of meningococcal disease. The CDC recommends that everyone be tested for HIV at least once throughout their lives. Individuals with meningococcal disease who have unknown HIV status should be checked for HIV as recommended by providers. Overall, just after reading this morbidity and mortality CDC report, you can see that the meningitis and blood poisoning vaccine coverage among people with HIV is low because of the increase in meningococcal disease cases among the population. The population group, which is again the people with HIV, people may have uh, social or economic factors that could add to why they are not receiving the men ACWI vaccine. If individuals and healthcare professionals work together and follow up with these correct precautions, they can help prevent men from becoming another one of these cases. Okay, now moving on to my second uh, report just titled National State Level and County Level Prevalence Estimates of Adults Age 18 Years or Older Self-Reporting a Lifetime Diagnosis of Depression. Depression is the disease that is being reported in the CDC report. In the United States of America, depression is a leading cause of morbidity and mortality. The population group in this report is adults 18 years or older. In America, depression is a major cause of mortality, morbidity, disability, and economic expenditures. All estimates are prevalent in this research were age standardized in the population of United States Census Bureau in 2000. 
Something in this report that I found interesting that they stated was there was significant geographical, vari geographical variation in depression, depression prevalence, with the Appalachian and Southern Mississippi Valley areas having the highest state and county estimates of depression. Many chronic illnesses, including diabetes, arthritis, and cardiovascular disease, include depression as a comorbidity. These disorders are most prevalent in Appalachian states, implying that spatial variations in the frequency of depression may reflect patterns of other chronic diseases. The diversity in depression may also reflect the impact of socioeconomic determinants of health in counties or states, such as economic position and access to health care. When you think about it, individuals in the Appalachian area have lower incomes, greater poverty rates, and lower levels of education, all of which have a detrimental impact on their physical and mental wellness. Efforts at the population level to address depression prevention, treatment, and management include personalized and targeted initiatives to address demographic and geographic inequities. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention provides information about mental health services and initiatives, including those aimed towards particular populations. This report discusses how the CP CPSCF presents a list of suggested treatments to communities in order to enhance mental health or manage mental illness. Collaborative care for the management of depressive illness, mental health benefits legislation, school-based cognitive behavioral therapy programs to improve depression and anxiety symptoms, and depression care management among older persons are examples of recommended interventions. It also mentions how young individuals aged 18 to 24 years had the greatest prevalence among those who had previously been diagnosed with depression by a healthcare professional. According to data from the National Survey on Drug Use and Health, Previous year depression grew, and most significantly among ten teenagers aged 12 to 17 years and in young adults aged 18 to 25 years from 2015 to 2019. In the report, it states that the age standardized prevalence, age standardized prevalence of depression among U.S. adults was 18.5%. Age specific prevalence of depression was highest amongst those 18 to 24 years, which was 21.5% and lowest among those aged 65 years or older, which is a 14.2%. The age generous prevalence of depression was higher among women, which was a 24% compared with men, among which was a 13.3%. It was higher among the non-Hispanic white adults, which is a 21.9%, compared with non-Hispanic black or African American, which was 16.2%, and then for non-Hispanic Native American or other Pacific Islanders, it was 14.6%. For Hispanic or Latinos, it was 14.6%. And non-Hispanic Asians was 7.3%. And higher among adults who had attained less than a high school diploma, which is 21.2%, compared with adults with a high school education or equivalent, which is 18.5%, and college degree or higher, 15.4%. I am not too surprised to see that the age standardized prevalence of depression was higher among women than men. I remember doing research a few semesters ago about depression and had read about that. Women are more sensitive than men to things. Like, we get more upset over things, even if it's something so little, as to where men are kind of like the nonchalant, you can do whatever you want type of people. Some Something that I was, however, surprised to see that was non-Hispanic white adults had a higher percentage of depression than the other races. That was really surprising to me. Overall, I learned that physical exercise, adequate sleep, and a beneficial diet are all health promoting practices that can help manage depressing symptoms and promote positive mental health throughout an individual's life. Reflecting back onto the population group, which is, again, adults 18 years or older, social or economic factors such as where people live, work, attend school, they surround themselves with, and so on and so forth, all contribute and factor into depression. As a person who struggles with depression, knowing now that all of this can factor into how you get depression makes me want to focus more on these th little things that I never really have paid attention to that would contribute to it. All right. This is the end of my review and to summarize, this is the end of my review and summaries of both reports. So thank you so much and I hope everyone has a fantastic day.